Danny Ainge's stint with the Boston Celtics has been met by cheers and jeers among Boston fans and NBA fans in general. On a positive note, he's helped deliver the Celtics the biggest single season turnaround in NBA history. And of course, I'm referring to the 07 season when they won just 24 games, and the 08 season when they won a league leading 66 games, and they won the title in that same season. Secondly, he pulled off one of the greatest trades in modern NBA history, in which he traded two-thirds of the Big Three and Jason Terry for a future first that would become Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. Thirdly, he also helped accelerate the Celtics from a 25-win rebuilding team to the eighth seed in just the next year. This was spearheaded by the acquisition of Isaiah Thomas for just Marcus Thornton and the Cavs' 2016 first-round pick. And in IT's full first season with the team, the Celtics won 48 games and were the fifth seed that season. And in 2017, which was the second full season with the team, the Celtics had the best record in the entire conference, and IT's MVP caliber season produced some of the most fun moments throughout that season. And lastly, Ainge refused to trade Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown in trades for Kawhi, PG, and Anthony Davis, knowing that those players would inevitably leave for LA when they hit free agency. It's odd to say that it's smart not to trade for superstar caliber players, but given how JT and JB have blossomed, you'd have to take the 10 to 15 years that they could offer you rather than the short stints from those stars that wouldn't even guarantee you a title. As for the negatives, some people consider the Kyrie trade to be a mistake in hindsight. But even with that, I'd disagree. If you're presented with the opportunity to trade for a superstar point guard, who is a clear upgrade over IT, then you do that 10 times out of 10 morality aside. And even though Kyrie did leave in free agency two years later after being acquired, I don't think that any Celtic fan is punching themselves at night knowing that Colin Sexton isn't on their team. However, there are areas where Ainge does deserve criticism. I do think that the memes of Ainge being very stingy in trading draft picks is obviously overblown. This kitchen's not the same. But I do agree that he could have been more lenient with some of the later firsts that the Celtics had in some of these drafts. I mean, we've been hearing the legend of the Celtics having all these picks post the Nets trade, but they really haven't amounted to much outside of JB, JT, and uh, Robert Williams. Guys like Romeo Langford, Carson Edwards, etc., etc., have been wait and see prospects. But to be fair, Grant Williams has actually been sold for this team thus far. Even with that being said, Ainge should undeniably take criticism for the signing of Kemba Walker. This isn't even me looking through the lens of hindsight. I've been adamant about this since the day they signed Kemba Walker in the first place. The Celtics already had Tatum and Brown's extensions coming up. They just signed Smart to a 52-year, million-dollar, four-year extension the previous year. And they still had Hayward on a massive deal as well. So, signing Kemba on a massive deal would only make you inevitably closer to luxury tax while also thinning out the rest of the roster because obviously with so many players on high salary, you can only do so much with the rest of the roster. They should have just not signed Kemba, allow Smart to run the point guard position to start, and make signings that would supplement the talent that's already on the roster. Instead, they're now stuck with Kemba and his ever-nagging injuries. He's shown stretches of brilliance this season, but for the most part, his season has been up and down as you can get. Moreover, this actually leads us into what's actually in store for the future of the Boston Celtics. But before we continue, I'd really appreciate it if you guys would leave a like on the video, as each like makes a massive difference for this channel. And if you end up enjoying the video, then feel free to subscribe to the channel. Danny Ainge just stepped down as the president of Celtics Basketball Operations, and Brad Stevens is taking his place. As to how well Stevens will do in this role, well, it's impossible to tell. He's obviously a great coach, and you'd think that having coached for many years with the team, that he'd have a feel for knowing a lot of the players in the league, and other stuff like that. But again, it's still hard to tell. On top of that, he has to understand the salary cap and all the logistics and stuff like that. Even though Stevens is no longer the coach of the team, we've seen coaches like Doc Rivers and Stan Van Gundy have terrible stints when being in charge of the roster construction of the team while coaching in the past. And these stints I'm referring to are Doc's stints with the Clippers and the Van Gundy stint with the Detroit Pistons. So you just have to hope that Brad Stevens ends up being a Greg Popovich success story like we've seen in the past. 
As for the Celtics offseason, that's definitely going to be a head scratcher. I can't imagine a single team willing to deal for Kemba Walker, knowing that he's not going to be an unrestricted free agent until 2024. He's going to have a player option worth $37.6 million in 2023, but I doubt he's going to deny that unless a team is going to offer him a substantial amount of money that's slightly lower than that $37 million, but over across a, a larger amount of years. As for who the next coach is going to be, Jason Kidd, Lloyd Pierce, Becky Hammond, Kenny Atkinson, etc, etc have been rumored. But yeah, I'm not going to get into that until we have official interviews being conducted, no the actual official candidates that are being up for the running, and different stuff like that. But in the grand scheme of things, I highly doubt that any of the candidates that they hire are going to be as good of a coach as Brad Stevens was for this team. I wish that I could make a more detailed video on the specific moves and uh, specific coach that the Celtics should hire. But speculation at this point is just a waste of energy, so let's just wait and see. When the offseason comes around and we actually hear news from Shams and Woj as to what direction the Celtics wants to head in, then we can officially speculate on different matters like that. As usual, thank you guys for watching. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed the video. But with that being said, stay tuned.